Hello my soccer universe and welcome to the review of Champions League match day four. I think overall when I just look at the matches per se it was again a very exciting round with quite some standout ties in there. However you saw already the title of this video which is the for me everything that I can summarize in here which is we have early qualified teams that are qualified already after four games four of which one of which I'm wearing Juventus the other three are up there it's kind of blocky this background this time around this day this time i took the 13 or 14 teams with you that are most likely to qualify for the next round so that was the one thing the next theme is of course the stuttering super teams which is anyway something we've been talking about uh, in other videos and i'm talking of course uh psg and manchester united there and the last one out there were a couple of really harsh red cards uh, yesterday, especially where I gotta say, boom, that took a load of uh, bad decisions. Uh, again, bad decisions in the Champions League. Uh, yeah, for once, not for Milan. We're not talking much about the Rossoneri because, yeah. What I'm gonna do now is I wanna run through all the groups and talk about the games in these groups and give you my feedback and then a little bit on how things uh, are moving forward there. Uh, and yeah, I would say let's uh, go right into it. We'll start with the uh, groups that were played on Tuesday, which are groups e, e to H, the lesser groups. I mean, uh, whenever it's A to D, that's great. Uh, there's uh, outstanding action and then the other ones yeah there are a couple of really tight groups that are very interesting in there but i always feel it's a little bit less um entertaining as is, uh, groups a to d so yeah we'll start in group e uh with bayern rolling over benfica i mean for a while benfica was in there uh but you know you just uh, they even had a goal this allowed for offside uh, was very, 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 very tight. So I gotta give credit to Benfica. They really did their all, but Bayern is just too good. Lewandowski, Gnabry uh, make it very quickly, then 2-0. Uh, Morata pulls, pull, pulls back, then Bayern gets a penalty. A rare penalty that Lewandowski uh, sees saved right after the half. Bayern was not happy with their performance right after the half. Sané, Lewandowski make the scoreline comfortable. Uh, Nunez pulls one back and you know, as I said, Benfica was uh, trying to play with Bayern, however they were outclassed on every level. And 5-2 uh, again Lewandowski, who just with missing a penalty, he still scores a hat-trick. Tells you how good that guy is and I would say uh, very much uh, Ballon d'Or uh, material. Um, the other game, Barcelona are huffing and puffing to a 1-0 win at uh, Kiev. I think they had a goal disallowed and it counts and so Fati, but it was... This was one of the worst Champions League games that we will see all season. Still, Barcelona at the moment looking not that bad with a home game against Benfica coming up. That may be all the difference that is needed there. Uh, they have more points than Benfica. So we got to see, but on the other side, both teams have to play against Bayern. But I think it will more or less come down to that. Yeah, if Barcelona wins that one, they are through. So uh, that uh, will all be hinging there. But I gotta say, Benfica looks much more of a team than Barcelona at the moment. So yeah, the two former European giants. Group F is one of the tightest ones, uh, although I think young boys are not falling away. Atalanta against United. I mean, what what can I say about this game that I that hasn't been said pro probably for that United literally only relies on their superstars uh, pulling uh, pulling out a performance. Um, that's nothing new. That Atalanta probably will feel a grief that they did everything to deserve that win. They did everything to deserve that win. They uh, played chances. They hit them under. Uh, they hit United on the counter attack. Uh, they got twice the lead. Um, Ilicic the first one, then Zapata with uh, a greatly taken goal. Although uh, that this wasn't offside was a little bit of a surprise, to be honest. Uh, missed numerous chances. They did everything to deserve that win. However, United gets a draw on the backs of their life insurance called Cristiano. 
uh, who already gets an equalizer after a really nice uh, Bruno Fernandes pass uh, in the first half in stoppage time. And then another one starts to stoppage time. Where, uh, At- Atalanta just doesn't clear. Mind you, an Atalanta side missing uh, several key players. Um, and then you think about it. I mean, if I look at that United squad and I look at that Atalanta squad, just by squad and by money put in and so on, this should not even be a contest this game so uh, from that sense I think Atalanta can leave uh, uh, their own stadium with uh, heads held high the problem is that of course Villarreal are uh, getting another win and with that late equal as Atalanta goes I think for, uh, they would have uh, led the group now they are in third third place not in a very comfortable position the Villarreal game uh, yeah was not a great one uh, Villarreal have, having the trouble they are definitely missing Gerard Moreno up front um, and um, Young Boys even had an equal, they were pressing, but you know, two goals by a cup away. Uh, and very late, uh, Danjuma uh, set Villarreal on uh, track, level on points with United. Uh, they are both of these teams are set to move forward. Uh, next round, we have Atalanta play against Young Boys, and United and Villarreal uh, hosts uh, United. So that uh, that I think will tell us a whole lot. About it and the head to head. I think it United will go through huffing and puffing, but they will go through. Uh, huffing and puffing. Tight group is also Group G, where Salzburg with a win could have qualified. No, they did not, not give it. Read the back very early on, uh, gets a um, goal. Then uh, Salzburg in their typical dominant fashion. I mean, they needed some, 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 some time, but they literally controlled uh, Wolfsburg. Probably that game, it was even my favorite jersey matchup this week as, as well. I mean, uh, light green against dark blue look kind of nice. Um, Salzburg gets equalizer through Verba, but Wolfsburg was uh, definitely with a different energy there. And despite all the possessions, maybe even some uh, chances, it is Wolfsburg that uh, actually do take the lead again. Another great goal, but a uh, great goal, Mecha scores this one. And Wolfsburg rise, rise it out and even had some, some stress on the counter to make it 3 1 to kind of even out the score. But at least uh, this way, Salzburg will win the head to head against Wolfsburg. But this was the first time where you could kind of see, yes, yeah, Salzburg is a very young team, they're not quite hanging in there. However, they are still uh, very much top of the group and also favorites to go through. Uh, even more so as Sevilla really put themselves in big trouble. Lucas Ocampos gives Sevilla the lead and then Jonathan David and Ikone just before and after the half turned the game around and then in the end it was not even undeserved. Uh, Sevilla really uh, having trouble this uh, Champions League season uh, and they basically need to win out in order to have a chance uh, in this group. I mean, what's good for them, it's, it's a tight group. They have to come to Salzburg on the last ga- uh, day and then I think they they also host now Wolfsburg, uh, which will be a huge one. Salzburg, uh, of course, having to go to Lille, uh, where again with a win they potentially uh, could put themselves in a, at least in a very good position, if not uh, clinching their round. Uh, a spot in the next round but I think it will not be as straightforward for Salzburg as everyone thought after three games then uh, the probably least interesting group of them all is group H where Chelsea without even stretching themselves too too much get a 1-0 win at Malmö Malmö tried their all but there was such a golfing class so uh, Chelsea uh, winning 1-0 uh, Ziyech scoring scoring goal and then Juventus also a little bit rough um, Stumbling, I mean, they get the early goal through Dybala, um, then Bonucci with a freak on goal, where, you know, a cross comes in, is far, 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 and he touches the touch ball, it goes in, 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 into the net. But then uh, Dybala kind of takes the ga- game on his shoulders together with uh, Chiesa. Uh, they get a penalty, Dybala converts on two tries. First one he missed, second one, uh, you know. Two players were uh, in the box, so rightfully uh, re- retaken. And Chiesa scores one, and then Morata again uh, assisted by Di uh, Dybala makes uh, the score. And Rada can't come to a 4-1. However, Zenit uh, put one back late through as Moon, which was a well taken goal. And in that group, you know, Juve ahead of Chelsea. If Chelsea wants to win, we win a group that basically need to beat Juve at home. And that was that Juve already through. So, uh, probably the weakest Italian team uh, in. The champ, the Champions League is the first one to qualify. So, Juve out.
uh, moving on uh, together with Bayern from Tuesday. So let's go uh, yesterday's action again. I'm going for A through D. Uh, Manchester City had surprisingly uh, a little bit of trouble with Bruges uh, early on. I mean, Foden gets them uh, again. Typical City goal, nicely played goal. Uh, the lead, but the right uh, from the kickoff. Bruges uh, forces a big uh, save from Edison. Uh, then across from the Cadillac comes, comes in. That I think um, uh, Bernardo Silva wants to save, but he deflects it onto Stones' head and into the net. I mean, uh, absolute slapstick goal. But and Bruges is a team that really is hanging in there and is doing good things. However, in the end, uh, man matches is just too much and, you know, they run out of steam and then Mare Sterling uh, make it 3-1 and the lay late on Gabriel Jesus. But, uh, the, you know, the calls for, we need a striker, we need a striker were there, but it was not really much. City uh, very comfortable in this group, uh, despite the loss at PSG. PSG, the other team. Where you gotta say, poo, this does not look good. Okay, this time no Messi to bail them out. In a way, uh, Leipzig, especially the early exchanges, completely dominated this game. Should have led by more than this uh, than the Nkunku goal by Andre Silva. However, Andre Silva uh, has the chance to put them up 2-0. Steps up, sees Donnarumma there, of course, former Milan teammates. And you could see how Donnarumma is trying to get into his head. And in his head he gets and Andre Silva does not take a good penalty. Donner. It's an easy save for Donnarumma uh, in many ways. And you know, Andre Silva not quite working at Leipzig. He was great at Frankfurt, not working at Leipzig. And then the game turns on his head. Ronaldo with a beautifully played goal. You know, if you have superstars, you always have these um, actions. Van Aldon, of all people, scores the equalizer and he even gets uh, the 2-1. Uh, where on the corner, Marquinhos had it to Van Aldon, who he has acres of space around him to head, head, head it in. He was not even uh, offside. So, a little bit against the run of play. Leipzig then really, really pressuring. And of course, Mbappé had a, had a few counterattacks where he probably should have scored. And put the game out of sight but Leipzig hang in there uh, try their all uh, invest a lot and then in the end get a penalty that to be honest how stupid can you be if you're Kim Pembe I mean basically jumping on the back of the Leipzig defender and pushing him down uh, idiocy to the highest degree and of course PSG players trying you know every dirty trick in the book uh, to kind of, you know, I mean, Don 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 is going to refer. Why? 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 Gets a, gets a yellow card, or it was the other way around. Uh, for our argument too, too much, you saw Neymar talking to Soboslai, who was about to take the, take, take the penalty. Kind of talked to him. You think you're ready? I think you're ready to beat the goalkeeper? You're ready? And you see just uh, Soboslai nod, nodding. Yeah. And then ne Neymar walks by and claps to the back. I mean,. <laughs> <laughs> really foul, but then so uh, Don Donnarumma was there, uh, but so was like makes it two two. PSG really not look looking good, and I have a feeling that their trip to the Etihad next uh, in the next round will not end happy. But a huge one between Leipzig and Club Bruges, at least for the Europa League, and then we gotta see. I mean, Club Bruges probably is hoping for a final against uh, PSG in Paris where I actually they're well coached I don't see them out of this game at all Milan Porto first half as good as Milan were at Roma as bad they were against Porto every high ball into the box Milan could not handle Porto should have led by two or three goals then Milan got back into the game second half I mean, late for first half, they got a little bit back in the second half. Milan was then the better team. Probably then deserved the equalizer, although it came from an own goal. Uh, Kalula Gross and Bemba one, one, one to save it. Then Milan needed that win to have any chance because that draw, yeah, leaves them in there. But it's very, very unlikely that they uh, will uh, advance in the championships. Like they literally need to win out and need some help from Liverpool along the way as well. Uh, Slatan had scored a goal, but it was unfortunately offside in the build-up. Uh, so yeah, 
don't want to say much more. Um, and then Liverpool at late. I mean, Liverpool was brilliant. Uh, absolutely breezing through uh, Jota and Mane. After 21 minutes, that game was done. Atleti was not there. It should have been even ug uglier. Um, however, the game a little bit got the wind taken off with a really harsh red card where uh, Felipe, I mean, he trips uh, and it was a cynically foul. But honestly, to me, this was a yellow card foul. I thought the red was a little bit too harsh. Uh, and I don't know how this uh, stood up. Maybe because the studs were there, didn't look like a red red card. And I told I I could un un understand Atleti's fr frustration after I have Jota seemingly made it three uh, nil was disallowed. Uh, then uh, Luis Suarez a little bit later scores one. And at that point, I mean up until that that point, Liverpool was really really uh, pushing, and then they kind of took the foot full of the gas, cruising through Liverpool qualified as well uh, same thing goes for Ajax but boy this was not an easy game and again one that was severely influenced by a red card Dortmund was the better team in the first half and Ajax had real trouble containing Dortmund a weakened Dortmund side uh, this was kind of the Ajax that I know uh, shows up here and there where you they can be brilliant on their day but then they have some off days and this is why they will not uh, reach any, uh, any deep run in the Champions League probably, probably although you never know. The red card by, card by Hummels. I understand if you see it in play uh, it looks bad the way Anthony is falling. However, Anthony steps onto Hummels. And the way Hummels goes in is n in no way malicious, I thought. Uh, this was uh, this was a red card, although I was f f squarely in the Ajax corner. This did not look like a proper red card to me. Uh, Dortmund even take the lead through a uh, Royce penalty. Another one of those really stupid uh, fouls uh, where you wonder, yeah, why are you doing that? Uh, there is no danger. Um, but then with 10 men, second half, it's all Ajax. Uh, Dortmund's just um, defending. And late on, Ajax then get their goals. Uh, Tadic with, with, with equalizer, although he basically uh, hits the family jewels uh, while doing so with the uh, upright. And then uh, Anthony Cross uh, by Ale uh, finds Alea, of course, with his stronger left foot. And then Davy Klassen, Anthony again. But this time with the right foot, which is a, rare, a rarity, uh, pulling the game out of sight. Ajax through. And Dortmund will have to get a result in Lisbon because Sporting uh, really roll over Besiktas. That game was no, a non call because they should have been called at half, half time. Took a little while, but then Pedro Gonzalez uh, with a penalty and a goal in the 38th. Power Alinho with a great goal um, makes it 3, three nil, And then Sarabia, one of those that uh, did he really mean it, but it was brilliant. Uh, makes it 4-0. I mean, absolute destruction. Besiktas totally outclassed in this group. Uh, but I think it's the next round where um, uh, Sporting hosts Dortmund and that will basically decide who will go through. Dortmund needing uh, definitely a result there. If they win it, then they are also qualified. And then lastly, Real Madrid, another one. Yeah, that's maybe the third uh, team. That's really, really stuttering. Yes, they get the win. But Schachter should, should have gotten a point out of, out of this one. Uh, the first goal, uh, a, a horrible... Schachter wants to play out from the back, I think it was Malos, who then loses lose the ball uh, to Vinicius Jr., who just finds Benzema, who puts, who, who puts in. Perfect start, but then Schachter really showing, yeah, we are a team, we can play with you. And they get a very deserved equalizer through Fernando. Beautifully played, but again, optional defending. Absolute optional defending by uh, Real Madrid. This was poorly defended, I and mean, Alaba was left hanging alone. Um, and the game was, I mean, people were not happy at the Bernabeu. And the, it remained for the entire second half. However, I have to say, the winning goal by Bernabeu was, was a brilliant uh, move, quick passes. Uh, the way how we, Vinicius Juniors initiates it, the ball comes to him, He uh, it's back in his way, then he immediately one time, times for Benzema, who puts it in. That that was a really one of my favorite goals this evening, but boy, this did not look, look convincing. Uh, but unlike United and PSG, at least with Real Madrid, I have a 
feeling that there's at least a solid core, an old core, but there's a solid core there. It's a little bit more of a team, but it's a very much huffing and puffing. And they are also stumbling through this Champions League uh, group stage, which Inter, now they got rid of the Sheriffs. <laughs> the common comment they said, Sheriff really must like bondage a whole lot because the way Inter is taking them uh, is not fun. Inter just needed to, uh, you know, grind, 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 and then they get the goals. Uh, Brozovic, uh, uh, Skriniar, with three tries of getting uh, the goal. Uh, and then I think uh, with, with his first, first shot, San Sanchez just came on, makes it three, three in a very little entre, uh, Dama Traore. Not the one from Wolves. Uh, uh, makes the score a little a little bit nicer, but now uh, Real and Inter very much looking on the way that they are through. Inter really resurrecting their campaign, um, and the Real Madrid also, despite losing to Shakhtar uh, to Sheriff at home, they have to go to Transnistria next. So uh, that might be the one hope for Sheriff if they wanna beat Real Madrid. But uh, Inter looking safeish at the moment, but we gotta see. So that was it from me from the Champions League uh, so far. In any case, uh, le le let me know if there's anything that you would like to add to what was happening uh, this week. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to the channel and click the little bell icon so that you get updated whenever anything happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day!